If you don't like it, go start your own MMA organization. Pay them whatever you want to pay them. It's been done before. How's it worked out for other guys? Not well. Mind your business. One of MMA's most heavily debated topics is the argument regarding fighters' pay. On one side, there is heavy belief that the UFC fighters are underpaid compared to other athletes. More money for the fighters because it's a tough job. You shouldn't be in the top 10 having to work at Walmart or something. I didn't get the bonus last fight. I thought I should have. I need it. Dana, I want some chicken, man. I'm hungry. My mom's birthday just passed. Dana White, Christmas coming up. I have three kids, 50 Gs, please, please, man, I have three kids. While the other side think that they are fairly compensated for their skills and risks tested inside the octagon. Everybody's country is different. I'm happy. I'm very happy where I, I'm getting, but everybody's totally different. You happy with the amount of money that you make in the UFC right now? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's fair. But in order to answer this question, we need to ask, how does the UFC fighters pay compared to that of its rapidly rising competitor, the PFLs? A more recently founded promotion that offers a $1 million prize for each weight class champion. If Francis Ngannou decided to turn down a majorly lucrative offer from the UFC, the question arises, is there a drop in the ocean in fighter pay compared to the PFL? In this video, we break down both the financial and format differences and similarities between the two promotions and try to answer the much asked question of whether UFC fighters are underpaid or not. So if you're interested to know, make sure you stick around until the end. Before we get into the details, we need to know exactly who are we comparing here. So who is the PFL and why are they among the main competitors? The Professional Fighters League is a relatively new MMA organization that aims to challenge the dominance of the UFC in the global market. Founded in just 2018, the PFL is backed by major blue chip investors and sports team owners, with its global vision aiming to create the Champions League of MMA. The promotion also leads in technology and innovation with its PFL Smart Cage, real-time betting, AI scoring, and a next-generation viewing experience. The PFL brings a unique format where fighters compete in a regular season, a playoff, and a championship. Similar to traditional sports leagues, the winner of each weight class gets a $1 million cash prize, which is a huge incentive for the fighters. Ultimate Fighting Championship, UFC for short, is the largest and most successful MMA organization in the world. The UFC is much older than the PFL, being founded in 1993, and it has grown to become a global phenomenon with millions of fans and hundreds of events every year. The UFC follows a traditional format where fighters are ranked according to their performance, and they fight for titles and belts. The pay of UFC fighters depends on many factors, such as their experience, their popularity, and their contract. So how do these two promotions compare in terms of fighter pay? And are UFC fighters really underpaid compared to the other athletes? The main argument for the claim that UFC fighters are underpaid is that they receive a small percentage of the UFC's revenue, which has been growing significantly over the years. According to a lawsuit filed against the UFC in 2014 by former fighters, the UFC's revenue share with fighters was around 20%. This is very far from other major leagues such as the NBA, NFL, MLB, and NHL which share around 50% of the revenue with their athletes. The lawsuit also claims that the UFC purposely and illegally created a monopoly and that fighters have suffered as a result. For years, any real competitor to the UFC was swallowed up, such as Pride, Strike Force, and the WEC. With the purchasing of all real competition, it meant that promotion could pay as little as they wanted, which has contributed to the fighter pay problem. The lawsuit also received class certification in August this year, and that lawsuit is now scheduled to start in April of 2024. Another argument for the claim that UFC fighters are underpaid is that they have very limited opportunities to earn money from other sources such as sponsors, endorsements, and pay-per-view shares. In 2015, the UFC signed a deal with Reebok, now is replaced by Venom, which banned fighters from wearing any other sponsors on their fight gear and apparel 
resulting in a significant loss of income for many fighters. Moreover, the UFC has very strict and controversial contracts with their fighters, which include clauses that allow the promotion to extend the contracts for any reason, such as injuries, inactivity, or being a champion. This prevents fighters from testing their value on the open market or pursuing other opportunities such as boxing, which pays way more than MMA. Francis Ngannou is the latest example of exactly what the UFC does not want you to do. He managed to flee to the PFL and set up a lucrative boxing match with Tyson Fury, where he earned himself a huge payday and will continue to do so with the PFL. However, the main argument that opposes the claim of the UFC fighters being underpaid is that they are paid according to their market value, which is determined by their performance, popularity, and contract negotiations. The UFC argues that they pay their fighters fairly and generously, with President Dana White having no intentions to raise pay, saying, these guys get paid what they're supposed to get paid. But do they really? Let's find out. Base pay. Typically in the first two tiers, you get double the money if you win. Low tier fighters get between 10,000 and 30,000 per fight. Mid tier fighters get between 80,000 and 250,000 per fight. And high tier, top of the line fighters, they start at about 500,000 and they could reach eight figures per fight. The real other sources of income for UFC fighters are the performance bonus, the Venom deal, and the pay-per-view shares. The performance bonus is 50 grand, the Venom deal is 4,000 to 42,000 per fight, based on the fighters ranking and what they've done for the UFC. Reserved for top stars and main event fighters, the pay-per-view share is the amount of money that the fighter receives for generating a certain number of pay-per-view buys, which is the main source of revenue for the UFC. It is reported that these fighters receive a dollar for every pay-per-view sold between 200,000 and 400,000. The amount per pay-per-view ticket goes up to $2 if there are between 400,000 and 600,000. For pay-per-view sold above the 600,000 threshold, UFC fighters get $2.50 for each ticket. UFC highest paid fighter, Conor McGregor. He earned $5 million in base salary $11,000 as fight week incentive pay and $42,000 in Venom deal for his last fight against Dustin Poirier at UFC 264. He also earned an estimated $20 million in pay-per-view share, bringing in his total earnings to around a whopping $25 million. These are some examples of how UFC fighters are paid and as you can see, they have a lot of variables and factors that affect their income. UFC fighter pay is based on a market driven system where the fighters are paid according to their value and demand. This is different from PFL fighter pay which we discussed in the previous section. So now let's break down PFL fighter pay. Low tier fighters get between 8,000 and 20,000. Mid tier fighters get between 25,000 and 100,000 and high tier fighters get between 100,000 and 250,000. Exceptions who make a lot higher. PFL allows fighters to sell up to two sponsors, whereas the UFC doesn't allow it at all. That's just for the base pay from fights alone. The winner of each class pockets $1 million. As for bonuses, the win bonus is half of your base payout. For example, if you are paid $50,000 to show up and you win, you get a win bonus of $25,000 totaling $75,000. As for other bonuses, there aren't really any incentives for performances, but there are league points. The PFL's highest paid fighter is Francis Ngannou. Although not yet having made his PFL fighter debut, the Predators contract is MMA's most lucrative. Francis denied a deal from the UFC, which would have made him the highest paid heavyweight fighter in the UFC history, resulting in him parting ways with the company. He joined their rival, which definitely ensured an even bigger payday. Signed on May of 2023 and competing in the super fight division, here are the terms of Francis Ngannou's contract. He is getting a high seven-figure purse above $2 million 
every single fight. He will have a non-exclusive contract when it comes to competing inside a boxing ring, a minimum salary of $2 million for his opponent. He will also serve in a leadership role for the PFL Global Advisory Board, making Ngannou the first active fighter to serve on the board and represent fighters' interests. And Ngannou will be an equity owner of PFL Africa. So let's just say the man got taken care of. So which organization pays their fighters more? The answer really is it depends. It depends on how you measure and compare fighter pay and what you value and what you prefer. PFL fighter pay is more transparent, but UFC fighter pay is more market driven and flexible, focused on paying fighters what they bring in. PFL fighter pay is more consistent and more predictable, but UFC fighter pay is more rewarding and more lucrative. PFL contracts are more inclusive and diverse, but UFC contracts are more competitive and strict. Some fighters may like the freedom of PFL contracts, some may like UFC's pay if they are at the top, some may be happy, some may be unhappy, some may switch, some may stay. The choice is up to the fighters and the fans. Which would you prefer? Let us know in the comments down below. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for the latest news in the MMA world.